Oh, Shane, I've been I've been literally just thinking in your Dick Cheney impression the entire week. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I'm glad. <laughs> in the entire week. I'm glad to uh, be of assistance in this regard uh, to move forward with the uh, working week. <laughs> Jesus. It Hell just, yeah. I, I, if I'm honest, I, I listened to some of the episode, the, mm-hmm. the, the one that came out this week. And it's weird, too, because, like, as we're doing these episodes, it's not like I'm absorbing everything necessarily because it's like you're thinking, you're making sure it's going well. Like, you're, you're just right. Your and you're managing going. then your your portion of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course. And so listening to it, you know, and, and just like learning more about like what was happening. And it, I'm just like it just again, it just brought up so much anguish. And this is like I, I wrote a tweet about it to you know to about the episode, and I was like you know for those of us that went through it and had our lives and, and adults lose their fucking minds because of these you know imperialist initiatives and the the propaganda that was being churned out you know in partnership with the neoconservatives you know it's jarring to relearn. Also, there's lots of people who could be 20 years old right now, born after 9/11. And they didn't, and they didn't, you yeah. know, have their adolescence and coming of age being, you know, directly, you know, influenced by it. And yet, it's just, it's just so fucking crazy that all of this happened. The fucking burn pits, dude. Like that. That was like, <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, you know, you're talking about it. I'm like, it's so crazy. It's, and it's I, absurd, man. It's absurd. Not, not to make this at all about like, um, you know, you know what that was talking about, but, um. Like you said, Shane, it's like that's the end of the world, right? Yeah, that's the it's, end I of mean, the it's world. A, I mean, it's such an apocalyptic vision, right? As just even a singular image, and I think it's interesting because now with all of the kind of constantly churning, you know, twenty-four hour news cycle and all the various chaotic things that have happened in the last few years, there is that sense, especially if if you're online and you get more plugged in online, and there's just like a, this kind of constant outrage cycle about all these different things that are happening. You know, a lot of it righteous i'm not trying to dismiss it or anything but there, there you can get the sense of like this is like a new phenomenon or something or like oh I, i'm noticing it more right this like sense of like weird absurdity but you know it's obviously it's always been present but particularly in our lifetimes like this shit has been like you know these like weird like I, like literally like dystopic <laughs> like <laughs> like the future is now and it's ho- awful no, oh, no, I was, dude i was watching <laughs> i was watching children of men the other night and i was just i was struck by you know especially watching that now and sort of like when that was made what, 15 years ago or so and mm-hmm. how similar in, in in many ways that is to like our current situation and yes. sort of like re-emphasizing yeah. in my head like i just kept remember having the thought like yeah we're, we're in the dystopia we're in the dystopia like we're already right, yes. we're in it we're in the dystopia yes. right now we're living through um like a collapsing empire and not to mention like literally decreasing fertility rates yeah yeah. Right. I mean, it's just on an assault on every level. We, like every weird fantasy of of apocalypse and dystopia that was expressed in media, uh, which definitely was, again, it has its own storied history that goes way bef- back before we were born or whatever. But there, there was a lot of it in American pop culture in like the '90s and and 2000s, and it's like, and it's basically all come true. Yes. <laughs> you know, like there's yeah. there's no yeah. vision of like hope right there's no like imagining like at the beginning you know of the industrial age right and the sort of the beginning of utopic or, or far future sci-fi and stuff there you know there there were always these concerns and there of course you can go back and you look at these like early dystopic texts but there was still this sense of like this glittering future you know this 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 particular image of like sure. a white white city you know like a, a beautiful perfectly clean white city with like um and here i'm talking architecturally but i'm sure yeah, a lot yeah, yeah. of other yeah, visions well, for, it also you know, took on that <laughs> glimmering city on the on the right but, hill, no, but that, that know, was the, I, I just mean that like visualization right like that imagining of the future um and you know there are still elements of it now i think the the one place in popular culture that in our lifetimes that really espoused that was <clears throat> not even in the realm of politics but like in like silicon valley right silicon valley's vision of like the sort of frictionless you know perfect design i don't know if um we ever talked about this when we've talked about tech companies but like if you ever look at like the, the campus design like uh uh pictures for like uh, uh google or um or apple right i've when been they would, to like, the google des- campus but really the, and stolen in- their um oh that's their right. google bikes yeah <laughs> <laughs> nice as you should yeah as you should but like all the all the all the drawings all the 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 kind of conceptual 
uh, concept art for them when they, they were made. They looked like, like, you know, like just literally like mid-century propaganda images, right? Like, and just in the style of the way they were painted and the kind of vision of the future they had. Um, like the, the movie, the film poster for Metropolis. Like that. <laughs> right, right, like- right, 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 right. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I think about that idea of, like, just on a, on a cultural level, you know, what, what you get told, like, what are, what are the horizons that are offered to you as a young person? Like, what is the, what does the future hold? What is, what is the ambition? What is the goal? Like, what is society moving towards? And, like, you know, from the time that we were growing up, it was just like, yeah, you're fucked. Like, there is no future. That was just being, like, shouted at. They might as well just fucking put that on billboards. There is no future. Go to fucking Chick-fil-A. Who cares? This this is this is the this is the twenty first century um Silicon Valley utopian headline that we should that we deserve. Couple who ran poop testing firm in Silicon Valley charged with fraud. <laughs> <laughs> I mean poop that testing? was like Yeah, no, that was this was uh a few a few weeks ago uh that it came out, but the, yeah, there was like a they would test gut biome and stuff like that from your poop and mm. g- try to get reimbursement from health insurance providers and it was just a complete fucking scam and <laughs> they were taking your poop and turning it into gold unless uh, one man's poop is another man's treasure that's that's the future that we we're actually gunning towards <laughs> and it's true though i th- like i think about this a lot i was thinking about this today and i'm sure i'm sure when i say this if you're listening like your head's going to nod so hard it's going to fall off like just the rising stress of pressure of the things that you have to do that it's like you can't even there's no there's nothing you're doing for yourself everything that you're doing is in service of somebody else like i thought of it today i was like even if i wanted to just like take the afternoon off and not feel any obligation like what would i even do would i like right. you know go it's Video it's, it's not enough it's again yeah but it's exactly <laughs> it's like you have to do something with like such a lower uh, a much lower barrier to entry because the barriers to entry to do things are just like increasing 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 and like it's just everything that you do is in debt or in service to something else. And in fact, I checked myself the other day with uh, some internalized capitalist propaganda, which was this. I was like, I was looking something up and I was like sitting there for like an hour on my laptop. And like it was in the morning when my mind is like kind of the most active. And I was thinking, I was like, ooh, maybe I should write an article about this. And so I started researching this, and then I just kind of went down a little rabbit hole, and eventually I was looking up, like, a stock price of some company, because I was like, well, maybe something happened, you know, this correlates with this change, and maybe I'll see in their stock price it reflected. And then I started, like, I don't know how to describe it, and maybe you guys know what I'm talking about, but just like this, I became fraught with guilt of, like... Dwight, you don't even fucking invest any money in the stock market, dude. Like, what what are you even doing? This is fruitless. You're not going anywhere with this. This isn't going to yield you any sort of results. Like, who fucking cares if you, you're interested in looking this up? And I was like, that is what they robbed us of, is that they robbed us of the uh, the ability to just be curious and just mm. look up something for the shit of it and to just go and ha- explore and have fun. And maybe you come out the other end having learned something. Maybe you come out the other end not having learned something, but it doesn't matter because that was your time. That was your time to spend for yourself and just for your own amusement. And that, I think, is the thing that is so fucking robbed of us that we can't even express for ourselves anymore, in, even even in the, the hour that it was, because the propaganda tells us that no matter what you do, your time should be quantifiable and mercantile. It should be something that should be going to yield you something at the end of it. Have a good return of investment of your time. And that's such bullshit. We shouldn't have to feel like that at all. Sip spear. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) Attaboy. Oh, this is good. this is what they took from us. <laughs> That's um, right. I, I did. I just. I wanted to. This. I kind of wanted to throw this in here. Let's. Um, speaking of, um, we started the conversation off by talking about Dick Cheney, and speaking of um, other relics of the uh, the George W. Bush administration. I woke up this morning and I went on Twitter. Got yourself a gun. And I. <laughs> 
I <laughs> wanted so to, sorry. man. I wanted so to, man. Because I, I read something. <laughs> I read something that just infuriated me so much, which was um, this. Did you see the Politico article from today about with John Boehner? It was excerpts from his book. Yes, where dude. he is now. Like, like the main, I guess, takeaway from this book was that, or from this article at least, was that John Boehner hates Ted Cruz and also um, that he's essentially trying to rewrite history in such a way that, um, like, the whole thing is him reminiscing about this, um, you know, this sort of magical time in the Republican Party before everything went off the rails, before, you know, before everyone thought Obama was a secret Muslim and Trump came along, you know, and the when biggest... in the, like, 1870s? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the biggest and the biggest scandal, you know, was, um, you know, John Boehner's um, close friend and associate, Dennis Hastert, having sex with boys oh, or, or, or God. whatever. But like the, in that he's trying to portray himself as someone um, sort of, you know, in the mode of the Republican Party, you know, the respectable Republican Party. I mean, this is this is a thing. This is, you know, there's people like Bill Kristol and a whole lots of people who have like sort of redefined their whole career over the past four years since Trump got elected as sort of like, um, you know, carrying the torch of this like, you know, respectable version of the Republican Party from before um, the Obama conspiracy and before Trump came along. And um, I, I was just reading this and it was absolutely infuriating to me First of all, let me let me read. I got, I've got to pull it up right now. Let me read a little bit about it. So he starts off. He's talking about um, you know Obama getting elected and um, you know all the um, stuff about him being Kenyan and a Muslim and all this sort of stuff. And this <laughs> is what. Uh, so this is this is quoting from his book right here. Mark Levin was the first to go on the radio and spout off this crazy nonsense. It got him ratings. So eventually he dragged Hannity and Rush to Looneyville along with him because uh. Sean Hannity, of course, and Rush Limbaugh, as we know, were. Um, totally sane and respectable um, political commentators but uh. before that. This, it gets even better. My longtime friend Roger Ailes, the head of Fox oh. News, was also not immune to this. He got swept up into the conspiracies and the paranoia and became an almost unrecognizable figure. I'd known Ailes for a long time since his work with George H.W. Bush in the early 1990s. Another on, respectable, <laughs> another, yeah, yeah, another yeah, yeah, yeah. respectable Republican. Um, he goes on to talk a little bit more about Roger Ailes, and um, he says, I ended up having dinner with Ailes and a veteran broadcasting executive named Rupert Murdoch. This is in 1996, and he's talking about how, you know, they were sharing with him sort of their, their project that they were working on, which would become Fox News. But, like, he's, he's, this is, like, nostalgic. Like, this is about, this is about Roger Ailes, you know, when he was, um, a good guy, you know, before he went off, completely went off the rails with the Obama stuff. And like, the, what's the most infuriating thing about this is that like, this works, like this, this absolutely works. Like if you looked in, of course, the comments, like the replies under articles or under posts about this on Twitter, it's like full of um, the same gullible liberals who are um, you know, eager to um, um, reform the images of people like George W. Bush um, are also willing to do it to, to John Boehner as well. And John Boehner now, even though he's supported he supported trump in 2016 mm -hmm. he endorsed him in 2016 but now yeah, sure did. but now he's trying to um sort of differentiate differentiate himself as this um sort of an example of uh, a respectable republican before the republican party went off the rails and you know i just wanted to look a little bit at a couple of john boehner's um votes as as a congressman please. yeah absolutely so you know and, and and before you continue i just have please. to say how i how valuable i think this is because like even like like we saw i think it was today or yesterday like tony blair came out saying like i didn't enjoy my time as <laughs> prime minister i'm like you need to fuck off <laughs> forever. Uh, Never show your face again in I public. Know. And I think it's important for us to remind ourselves and excavate these ghouls who, by and large, can just kind of disappear because they can. Because, the, you yeah. know, the media cycle gets too caught up that, like, you know, we don't have, which we should, a fucking Nuremberg 2.0 for these fuckers. But anyway... Sorry, please continue. But, but especially like John Boehner of, of of fucking all people um to try to like to try to pull this shit and, and try to like present himself as some bastion of you know respectable conservatism before Trump came along and, and you know the, the Tea Party came along and and ruined everything with you know bigotry and hatred and conspiracy theories and stuff. So so yeah. let's take let's take a look at a couple of um John Boehner's votes you know before the Republican Party became that. He voted no on prohibiting job discrimination based on sexual orientation. <laughs> nice. Um, he voted yes on constitutionally defining defining marriage as mm -hmm. one man, one mm -hmm. woman. 
Mm -hmm. He voted yes on making the Patriot Act permanent. Of course. He voted yes on constitutional amendment banning same-sex marriage. Voted yes on, quote, protecting the Pledge of Allegiance. He voted yes on a constitutional amendment prohibiting flag desecration. (laughs) He voted yes. This was in 1999. He voted yes on banning gay adoptions in D.C. Wow. Uh, Seriously. Absolutely. Um, He voted yes on... um, this describes it as ending preferential treatment by race in college admi- admissions. I would not. Um, that's a quote. I would not describe that that way. But, but he, apparently he was against, you know, a- anti-affirmative action and that kind of stuff as well. Um, supports anti-flag desecration amendment. Um, rated 28% by the NAACP, indicating an anti-affirmative action stance. That good, huh? Uh, yeah, here's another one here. I found this. Here's an article from um, 2015 called... Saudi Arabia gets bipartisan backing for Yemen airstrikes, and um, the first of <laughs> the first of those lawmakers that they quoted here is John Bader. I applaud the Saudis for taking this action to protect their homeland and to protect uh, their own neighborhood. Uh, if America leads, our allies in the region would be tickled to death and would be happy to join the coalition. But America has to lead. Can you imagine? I'm like trying to hear him say <laughs> "tickled to death" in his voice. <laughs> Tickled to death. I, I just, just, but, but, like, just to use th- that, that phrase, like, when describing, you know, human rights, yeah, abuses. blowing up school, drone striking school buses in Yemen, or like whatever the hell the Saudis are doing there and have been doing there for years. But yeah, this is, you know, this is the respectable. This is the respectable right. Republican Party before, you know, before. All that unpleasantness. Before the, all that unpleasantness and Trump came along when they were just privately racist and just, you know, in their private conversations and in their legislation, but they didn't say it out loud, I guess, or whatever he's trying to, to get at here, right? So this is, um, <laughs> this is how I started my day was reading this reading this goddamn article. Because I remember, I distinctly remember John Boehner from all the way back in high school. Um, I, I remember him distinctly as, you know, you know during, the, during the George Bush administration. And then for him to try to, um, you know, pass himself off, again, to sell books to gullible liberals who will believe, who will eat this kind of stuff up as, you know, a, a respectable Republican, you know, before Trump came along, before the Tea Party came along and, and ruined everything. Oh, he's a, this guy's a proper monster. And, and don't forget to remember, do you remember in like the, um, I think this must have been in like one of the last White House correspondence dinners, White House, or no, sorry, White House press correspondence dinners, Obama did like this bit with him, like a video with him, like reconciling and like sitting, have it, watch, supposedly watching a movie together. And it was like a whole bit of them sitting together mm-hmm. and then like walking in slow mo down the hallway. And like looking like badasses or whatever, and I'm like, <sighs> this guy like said every did everything he could to just skirt away from just saying the most racist, hideous shit to your face, and you're sitting here doing a fucking bit with him. I mean, they were he was a, this guy is evil, John Boehner. <laughs> Oh, here's an here, here's another one. Here's an, I was just like I was just kind of like skimming his Wikipedia page. Here's another good quote from him right here. I'm not qualified to debate the science over climate change. Uh, I fucking hate this. <laughs> what, one of my one of my favorite um one of my favorite facts about him is that <laughs> he was such a smoking enthusiast. Like we talked about fucking Dick Cheney t- doing putting down three packs a day. Like yeah. that's. Yeah, that's John Boehner. John, yeah, John Boehner. Yeah, also sort of famous alcoholic around DC. He he. Yes. Um, after in, which in is 2016, cool. Uh, he uh, just again skimming his Wikipedia. He joined the board of tobacco company Reynolds American. <laughs> yes. in 2016. Yeah. I mean, he um, like yeah. And then later, here just reading from Wikipedia. In 2018, Boehner joined the board of Acreage Holdings, a cannabis corporation, to promote the medical use of cannabis and advocate for federal descheduling of the drug, a shift from his previous stance while in Congress. Right now that he can oh make money off What a scummy, yeah. what a no, scummy I remember, piece I remember of see, shit. He was on TV like a year or two ago um, once he took that gig um, talking about it. But um, Here's one, one, one more good line just, again, from please. his Wikipedia. Um <laughs> Boehner made headlines in April 2016 when he referred to Republican presidential candidate Ted Cruz as Lucifer in the flesh. <laughs> in Don't make me like the guy. Uh, <laughs> he, he, so in, in the congressional office buildings, there's kind of like a weird kind of nev- nether region for regulation and stuff. And so he smoked in his office. Now, when he, uh, when he, when, uh, 
the Democrats lost the midterms, I guess it would have been in 2010. Nancy Pelosi yeah. had to switch offices, give the speaker's mm-hmm. office to mm-hmm. him and switch offices and take his former office. And I'm, I'm just reading here from a Vanity Fair thing from like 2000, whatever, 2016. And it said here, uh, Nancy Pelosi knew the feeling when she handed over the speaker's gavel to Boehner in 2011 and swapped offices with him. The paint had to be peeled off the walls <laughs> and all the carpets and curtains replaced in order to remove the tobacco stench clinging to the room. And even even Paul Ryan, when he became speaker, uh, it said it said, you know that whenever you go into a hotel room or get a rental car that has been smoked in, that's what his smells like. Yeah, and you know, I could I could it's so it's so it's so obvious too, like uh, like what his beef with Trump is because like when Trump got elected and Trump would talk about the swamp like this is like this is the swamp like this is what he's, he's the about. swamp thing and, yeah, yeah trump <laughs> yeah yeah trump i mean well his his lungs are very yeah, much exactly like, you know they were inside it, out you know trump sometimes um trump says things that are accurate right even if he didn't you know trump obviously also is part of that fucking swamp or, or whatever but i mean yeah someone like john boehner who um you know has been tied to um like you said the tobacco company lobbying and all these lobbying firms over the year like this is like the classic um like dc scumbag lobbyist right um right. or you know member statesman of, exact statesman diplomat <laughs> yeah um, God, i would i would hate to be his dry cleaner <laughs> <laughs> no, he guys like him cuz like he he's perfect. Like he's just a fucking haircut that went into public public service and then eventually just went immediately into the private sector to join the board Absolutely. of the cigarette brand that yeah. he had been a patron of. <laughs> Imagine that like being like, yeah, yeah, well this thing's probably going to kill me, but by god, if I can get a salary from the board, that'd be great. These here, people here. need to be excavated. Here's another little fun bit. Apparently, allegedly, in in, in 1968, after he graduated from college, he joined the Navy in the middle of uh, the Vietnam War. But after at w- at eight weeks, he was honorably discharged because of a bad back. Oh, that little very bastard. curious. I'll be damned. Very curious. Interesting. Very curious. Very interesting. There. I, I mean, I'll just say it. I I think he's a cowardly man. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, 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 and, whoa, whoa. And he's um, he's Shane. Look at a suit uh, here. I, I, I challenge him. <laughs> you challenge him. <laughs> I challenge see, him to I a contest of his choosing. I want to see his skill with a blade. I want to see his skill with a blade. <laughs> Trial by I, combat. I challenge him to to, to a, a, a winner take all best of three Twilight Struggle <laughs> match. <laughs> I'm going to go uh, one for one with him, like in the, the Nepalese bar in Indiana Jones, Raiders of the Lost Ark, where they go, <laughs> but it's cigarette for cigarette. And uh, we'll see who's, who's oh, safe I could standing. Do that. I could do that. <laughs> could you? T- <laughs> yeah. God, I, I, would, I don't think I, I would should, die. but I, I, I definitely could. There are I lots of things die. that I, I shouldn't do that I know I could. I could go shop for shop with him. Probably. I've got some, I got some pounds on him. I could go Probably. cigarette for cigarette with John Boehner. You think so? I challenge him. Yeah. I think. God you could, damn it, man. John Boehner! If you're listening, what about Not- like what about like food? I, I bet could I, could, I, I could out heat, eat him v- with, like, pizzas. Pizzas? <laughs> yeah. Or, I mean, pick pick your poison. I'm just saying. Shallots. Pizza- <laughs> shallots. Raw shallots. <laughs> okay. So, it's just, like, as many as possible? Is there a time frame? What's, the, what are we I'll describing t- here? Uh, they'll be peeled, so you don't have to peel them. They're pre- so it's just- pre-peeled shallots. Pre-peeled shallots. Who's peeling your shallots? I'll peel them. <laughs> so, okay, so before you meet up in Nepal. Yeah. Okay. I'm bringing a shack of, uh, sack of shallots. I'm bringing okay. a shack of shallots. Uh, Goldfinger bringing a <laughs> shack of shallots. And then, like, okay, also, yeah. like, remember, like, in the scene you're referring to in the, the Napoli's bar at Indiana Jones, when, like, the Nazi guy picks up the fucking medallion that's, like, been that's burned. That's John Boehner. No, well, it's been burnt. It's been, like, sitting in the yeah. fire, and it burns the hole in his flesh. So, like, instead, you, like, you know, you press that just against John Boehner's face. Oh my god. And leave. Um, you know, and then the Nazis have to use the symbols on his forehead to um, you know, fig- figure out where the ark is be- where the ark is buried. It's going to be in, in embossed in his forehead. It's just going to be a tri-corner hat for the tea party. <laughs> Wow. But, but yeah, I mean, fuck this guy. Scumbag. Scumbag. Yeah. Ir- irredeemable scumbag trying to re- rehabilitate his image um, in the aftermath of the Trump presidency and like, trying, like, to, like, trying to why? use that to differentiate himself, to sell books, to sell books, essentially, one I last, guess. One last, He's a millionaire. One, yeah, but it's one last go around. And it's also, you know, you get to that age and you, and you think like, if I have a shot to, you know, maybe you get uh, like, again, you get a little nostalgic, you get a little uh, concerned with 
your legacy, and you want to make sure you inscribe yourself as one of the good guys, yeah. as part of the grand American project. And yeah. and if people are receptive to it, um, yeah, I mean it's it's really fucked up and disgusting that like <laughs> that that you know that it that it works a, 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 in this kind of public way where like at the bare minimum, like again. You know, even wishing him to just be shunned out of public life isn't really, like, justice of any kind, but at least it would sort of, like, feel better, right? Like, yes. to, but 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 on top of that, you know, because he's, like you said, he's already a millionaire. Like, uh, you know, with the exception of redacted, 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 he's going to die, like, you know, wealthy, having accomplished many of his goals. If he really even had any ideological commitment, you know, it's just like a fucking grift towards power and money. Me, yeah. um and now to be able to re- rehabilitate himself i mean it's the same reason why all the fucking billionaires we talk about do like philanthropy yes, yes. like why why would you care at that point like if you already own the the planet why, like why right. like why do you give a shit and it's really because you get old and you get soft and you you know you think back and you're like oh i wish i could uh and it's like no fuck you i don't care you don't so get mean- you don't you don't get at that age to be like like maybe okay maybe for like that sense of personal reflection you're allowed to like think about your life but you don't get to like get forgiveness at a certain level there has to be a threshold i don't know what it is but i retain the right to discriminate based on whatever <laughs> whatever whatever i decide at the moment is that threshold but once you pass it at a certain point it's just like no you're a bad person that's it you're just a bad person you're you you are complicit in a fucking structure of evil that you helped build and you get to reap the benefits from it well people just have short <laughs> memories as well like i mean I, I think that trump will be rehabilitated sort of at, at mm-hmm. some point i mean even people like henry kissinger are like you know discussed as like a, a statesman and a diplomat right you know, now, nowadays um yeah i mean i think that you know 20 years from now it's gonna be like well you know trump um you know he had you know he wasn't great at the time but you know at least he didn't use the migrant children as fuel like we're doing now or you know like president tom cotton is doing now yeah, um, right, right, there, right, right. there will be a way yeah things will get worse and there will be a way to um rehabilitate trump as well oh um, man the way he, all these people get rehabilitated yeah, oh, he's got to give the eulogy at somebody's funeral <laughs> You know they gotta tap Trump. him to, to yeah to, to grimace. Come. He's gonna uh, to grimace. He's gonna give a eulogy at Grimace's funeral. <laughs> I really like speaking of Trump. I, I really liked the the picture or the video like uh, like this week of him at Mar-a-Lago, like at that couple's wedding. Well, that was this week, yeah, right? Yeah, like giving yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Oh, the dude. thing and giving the speech. I, it just it's just so good. It's so funny to see him in his suit. You know, into this sad little crowd of like the fucking dentists or racist dentists at Mar a Lago <laughs> or whatever. Yes. Um, yes. Jet, jet ski salesman. But like, it's funny because I think it's like I sort of like had this vision of like the future, like Trump's future over the next few years where he's like um, just sort of like in residence at Mar a Lago, like <laughs> yes, as if yeah. he's like. You know, like so I was like, sort of like fat, percodent, addicted Elvis, like in residence in Las Vegas or something, or like it some so some like is, some dude. washed up lounge singer. You can like go to Mar-a-Lago and see Trump talk about. You know, he's gonna he's gonna play all his hits, build the wall, lock her up. Um, <laughs> it's that's exactly what it is, dude. <laughs> he he's and there's going to be in Vegas. I'm sure there's gonna be like. 10 years from now, Trump impersonators <laughs> that are going to be doing this for fucking, you know, whatever. But he's just doing it live now in right. front of us. Right. right. You don't need an, an impersonator. You don't need an impersonator, man. Nobody can do Trump like Trump. See, my 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 metaphor for it that Am I... Am I going to go I, out like Stan Chera? <laughs> that, that I like is um, like t- Tiberius and Capri. <laughs> Just like a, it's like the fading emperor in his bathhouse, you know, mumbling to himself, like abusing the staff and saying shit like, like, oh, my legions, what happened to my legions? Don Jr., what happened to my legions? <laughs> you know, it's just like lamenting all of various failures. <laughs> and I, we, I, we never got all of Germania. <laughs> We could never penetrate the Black Forest. It's a stain. It's a stain on my robes. He's just like, he's just like in the pool with like a robe, and it's like floating around him. Oh, <laughs> Melania, <man>. why? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have, I mean, I'm sure you're right too, Chris, like 10, 12 years from in the year 2020, in the year 2030, there's going to be, you know, some uh, 
PR company that's retained by Matt Getz, and he's going to be like, you know, hey, you know, you know, I've had it was a rough go ten years ago, but I've grown as a person, and here's my no new book. Here's what I've learned, or I found Jesus, or some shit. Commercials. That's what I want him to do. I want him. I want him on TV plugging shit but like of course it would only be like the my pillow guy kind of for product. a great low rate you can get online <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> go yeah, to yeah, the yeah, general yeah. and save some <laughs> yeah yeah exactly yes yes dude uh, you know what you know what should happen when when biden is eventually like infirm enough that they just like yeah. o- officially remove him around around him, this around this winter or so yeah 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 him and trump should do the like i'm a mac i'm a pc commercials <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, they just uh, the, neither of them know what those things are <laughs> i'm calling it right now that the way that joe biden dies is that he it's like Bleep. it's like yeah. no, no. I, I already know how let me tell no. you <laughs> Is he's going to go outside like on a really cold night, like, uh, you know, he's going to go outside of the West Wing towards the Rose Garden and be like, Major, come on, come on in. And the door locks behind him and it's like 11 o'clock at night and no one's there and everyone's asleep and and Dr. Biden's upstairs in the residence. She's already asleep. And then he's just like, geez, it's kind of cold out here. And then he eventually it just gets cold. He's like, I think I see my father. And then he eventually has a he just dies of exposure. That's more likely of how he's going to die if not from you know some you know uh aged disease <laughs> in my mind in this scenario it's like dark right and he's like you know how he's like i can't get back in and it, you know it gets really silent and and and, and, and you know and you you the camera is positioned so you like see behind him and then you just see like a lightsaber go on like <laughs> 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 and it cuts and that's end of teaser trailer <laughs> <laughs> Can you please put in the can you please put in a lightsaber uh lightsaber yeah, yeah. sound there please. i'll send you 15 Spe- you can, <laughs> you specifically kylo ren's saber we all, we all know. <laughs> or you just hear <laughs> no no one's ever really gone is that, dad is that you <laughs> i'm sorry i disappointed you so much I gotta come clean. <laughs> no, he, he just he hears the chain, and and then he just he goes corn pop. Yes. Cut to black. <laughs> uh, must mm-hmm. must be some indigestion. <laughs> Darth Maul, I thought you died on Tatooine. <laughs> dad, I, I, Dad, I gotta I gotta come clean about something. You didn't you didn't lose your rag and your turpentine. Me and my buddy <laughs> took it out back. We were huffing it. We were experimenting. <laughs> This is is before we could get our hands on some skunk weed. This is what we had. Joe Biden, Joe Biden, like like huffing turpentine, like sitting sadly on a like a swing set, just like with his head down. I don't know why. That's the image I have now. I really like the image of like huffing, uh, huffing Huffing addict Joe Biden. Joe Biden. He's got like, he's got, like spray he's got paint like the, all over his mouth. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's yeah, got yeah. the metallic spray yeah, paint yeah, yeah. all over his mouth. <laughs> I live, I die. I live again. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm feel like I'm walking on sunshine. <laughs> Witness me. (laughs) (laughs) It's just still just on the swing set going back and forth. (laughs) Uh, Oh, God. Steamed up up my glasses. Hell yeah, dude. Especially just like listening to this week's, uh, you know, Biden excitement. You know, I mean, firstly, absolute devastation at the border. People, I think I saw it was like, you know, a a room that was, you know, a, a facility that was graded to hold a thousand people was holding 16,000 people or something Mm. COVID is a problem uh at this point i think it was like eight or nine days ago vice president harris was listed uh, you know was nominated as the person who was going to quote like handle the border crisis she has not given one public statement about it and you know again the 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 you official know what? she's posted a lot of pictures of herself walking down hallways looking really badass so you're right you know 
Come on. I mean, so there is that. He yeah. he's he's expelled the fucking <laughs> staffers that smoke weed. <laughs> yes, amazing. And they they uh, you know President Amtrak has uh, unveiled the infrastructure plan, which includes you know a let's just say an expansion of Amtrak. But what it really is is just an expansion of Amtrak on existing freight lines. You know, BSNF and and Union Pacific and all that stuff. That's what's that's what that is. That's what Amtrak is. For for people that don't know, Amtrak doesn't own its own um, uh, railways. I think there's maybe a few in the Northeast that they might own, but it doesn't. It it leases the space and the time from freight companies, and that's why it's slow. That's why it sucks. That's why it's frequently delayed, and that's why we're behind literally every other industrialized country when it comes to uh you know rail transport for for passengers. It's fucking embarrassing. Like, it's really fucking embarrassing. It's inexcusable at this point, which is probably why they just don't want to, um, you know, make it happen. Which, they, like, never has there been more ripe a time than to do a, pro- a huge, massive infrastructure project like this now. Well, Bi- Biden has the easiest presidency ever, because all he's got to do is just not be Donald Trump. Yes. Like, he doesn't have to do anything. Like, he just got elected because he's not Donald Trump. He's got it easier than anybody ever. It's true. I mean, even just like, you know, with the trains, it's just like at a time where there's still, uh, you know, 700,000 people per week filing for unemployment insurance, like a jobs program, a, a stimulus, an infrastructure thing, like this country will not survive if it doesn't invest in itself. And if you continue to allow capitalist programs to cannibalize every single bit of a public institution. He hasn't fucking fired Louis DeJoy, the fucking postmaster general, who, mm-hmm. by the way, if you didn't know, got that job because he he gave $1.2 million to Trump's inauguration uh, fund. That's how he became postmaster general. No prior experience of any sort of kind. <laughs> and, Trump, and, and Biden still has him. Uh, it's really, really fantastical to me. He really does not give a fuck. He doesn't have to. Uh, I haven't heard shit from Nancy Pelosi, dude. When was the last time you heard her name? Just now. Just there so you go. Yeah, like two seconds ago. That's a, we make the news here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was just thinking when you were talking, to like there is those those guys on on Twitter today. Like I don't even know who they were, but I I just saw, I saw so many people like quote tweet it or like picture it, you know, uh, whatever, um, screenshot it, where it was like it was like three in a row. It was perfect. It was like it was like one person being like um like what you know why, why are trains so hyped up like riding on trains suck and then the next one was like the train people are the like the library people and then oh, the next yes. person was like yeah it's just like when all the usps fa- fanboys came out of the woodwork last year and it was just like it was just like this like <laughs> sustained snarky fucking attack on like the the bear the th- th- tiny fucking one thread count sheet of social programs and infrastructure that we have in this country done in this weird hold on let me see if i can find it it's so please, fucking please. it was it was ben dreyfus's tweet oh, and then god. somebody yeah i know oh, god. and then somebody responded to it here i'll send the this is like the the, the bottom one so you can work your way ben, ben speaking um, of one by the way this is a, a side note one time ben dreyfus retweeted me and then like <laughs> Like two minutes later, undid the retweet. Like I guess after he looked at my profile. <laughs> oh, that's awesome! <laughs> Which I, I thought was very funny. What a waste! Yeah, th- this is fucking hideous. Okay, so yeah, Ben Drivers wrote. Wait, I like that people care about trains, but have you guys ever really but... been on a long train ride? <laughs> it's not great. I've taken Amtrak across the country, and it's really not an ideal way of doing that. Yeah, because we don't invest in because it. Because it sucks. Fucking, yeah, right. It's, it's, it's expensive yes. as shit, you and they don't fucking, fucking put any money into it. Yeah. Fucking idiot. God damn it. And then, yeah, this Josh Barrow guy wrote, the train people are like the library people. He's- you know those you know those uppity fucking library freaks? <laughs> you know those people who, who come around and, and are constantly shouting in your face like, you can have access to basic internet and all of the texts we have for free hey, at I don't one wanna, place um, in the community. I don't want to make this any worse, but go click on Josh Barrow's, this Josh Barrow guy. Go click on his profile and look at yeah, his we- pin tweet. Oh, dude! <laughs> I, I saw that. I saw that earlier. That, but notice the date. Was that the DNC? 
Or was that when Bernie probably. dropped out? No, that was probably know. the DNC. To, 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 the listener, dropped out way to the listener, what I'm referring to, that this fucking guy, Josh Barrow, who I've just heard of, but I hate, um, <laughs> his pin tweet is a gif of um, Joe Biden in a yellow sports car with his aviators on, like... I've seen this video, but I don't remember what the video is exactly. Um, it's the like get in, yeah, get um, in. No, kind of no, thing, no. I'll, I'll tell you exactly where this one comes from. <laughs> get it's in, loser. Much worse. It's much worse than you think. I think there was. It was like a Jay Leno's garage episode God with it. with Joe Biden in his his own uh, Corvette, like a '60s Corvette, like a Stingray, original, like pretty cool. And the and jo- Jay Leno, and then Colin Powell shows up, and they all kind of <laughs> oh. I just hurt you. I just a, a, a dagger through your heart. Oh, I saw go, man. and and Colin Powell shows up, and they all kind of chum it up, looking at you know Corvettes. Yeah, another and all that respectable stuff. relic of the Bush administration. Again and again, after after we did the Cheney episode, I watched nearly the entirety of the hour long testimony of Colin Powell in front at of the, the UN. Yeah, at yeah. the UN. Wait, and when he lied, to be clear, when he he, yeah, yeah. And and, it, and and I was and we're like, looking he was at even. The, Right about it afterwards, right, and right, he's right, like, right. "I after knew got, I was lying." So why caught, did you yeah. fucking do it? Why didn't you resign? Why didn't you make that your point? God, fuck you, fuck you. And you want to do the thing, you want to do the bad thing, and then also get credit for not wanting to do the bad thing. And I was, I'm looking at, I'm, I'm like watching the testimony, and I'm like, "Who's that?" Stupid fat fucking head behind him, and it was CIA director George. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say it was Jay Leno. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> also applies. <laughs> also applies. There was. I remember there was. A, there was a comedian that went on Leno, and I remember the comedian saying like to Leno, he was like, "If you told a sketch artist to do a composite on you, he would be like, come on, man, nobody looks like this.' <laughs> oh, Jay Leno. The Joker should go on Jay. The Leno. worst. Yeah, the worst late night host <laughs> by far. The worst late night host ever. And. Uh, uh, yeah, very talented young uh, comic. It was, it was a welcome, everybody. Joker. <laughs> <laughs> You're laughing. You think it's funny. <laughs> These young men <sighs> got killed, and you think it's funny. <laughs> I was th- I was thinking uh, about that. Uh, this I, I Shane, that same sentiment of you saying, um, you know, the, with the burn pits, like that's what the end of the world looks like. Uh, Late night, I think, like just straight up, has not survived COVID. Like it's just it hasn't survived Trump. It hasn't survived Trump, but like the way that they're trying to mine content and like come up with anything that's even remotely entertaining is so bad. And I saw Jimmy Fallon. um, Why? Why would you watch? No, it was it was a clip. It was like a clip on Twitter highlights or something like that. And uh, please, okay, (laughs) need I not debase myself? All right, all right, you can stay on the show. (laughs) But it was like. It was like uh, uh, some TikTok star. Uh, oh, I saw that. Yeah, teaches Jimmy Fallon to do eight TikTok dances, and I was just like, I, they're, why they're would out of you ideas. Say this? Why would you say this to me? They're out of ideas. Oh God, it's not good. And he, I tried. I tried. I think I tried seeing like a, a cold open of SNL a few weeks ago, and I know people say like it's unwatchable. It, it is. Like, I, I I I have tried to watch it because I like exposing myself to stuff i hate i mean i just i do mm. it <laughs> i do it all the time I, I i have such difficulty making it through a sketch an snl sketch nowadays it's it's really it's really unbearable i tried to watch one a week or so ago it was one it would have been the one after i don't even remember how i got down the rabbit hole of watching it but it was the, it was the one it was the sketch they did after the um Mueller report came out about how there was like no tie at all between um or necessarily there was like you know all the accusations about trump and russia were um not true necessarily um but it was like another um it was just like another shirtless putin sketch like that's all like every time they talk about putin that's all they do they do right yeah they do the shirtless putin thing but it's unbearable i couldn't make it through i couldn't make it through a few past the first few minutes entirely out of that was almost uh, that was um, ten years ago. Over <laughs> when 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 Putin did the 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 kind of shirtless, uh, you know, uh, whatever photo, photos, right? You know, in the in the in the Russian press, that was a, like a long time ago. Right, right, right. Well, it's it's also in like you know one of the one of the big things I think that has killed. I mean, especially like to an to an audience to, to like 
us as an audience, like we're biased, I guess, because we're on Twitter, right? And like, mm. um, I, I think that like one of the big issues is that like nowadays, like um, late night talk, like late night like comedy talk shows and SNL have also just sort of like sort of been ruined by the fact that um, you know everything moves so quick nowadays with social media and everything that like by, especially SNL, but by the time they get around to doing to like a, a, you know a current event in a in a sketch or something, it's like it's already six days old and every joke that they're saying is already yes. been said on social media, yes, or, right, or, yeah. or whatever. So um, not yeah. to mention even even like with the fucking TikTok dance thing, like the they're just mining social media, yeah, and predominantly. <laughs> especially like yeah. people of color that come up with content right. and like interesting right. things that are just completely cannibalized and never uh you know credited for it just totally totally uh cannibalized yeah like yeah. those late night shit is just like piranhas they just like <laughs> just just eat up a fucking yeah. ham bone and, and then yeah and then, it, and then at the end of the tiktok dance like shirtless putin and trump came out and they like made out because they're gay with each other, they, and, and that's they, bad. That's the joke. They have to weaponize homophobia to even <laughs> yeah. like try to. That's make, the like whole. They can't. That's the whole. That was the main Trump Putin joke. Yeah. Was yeah. that they're gay yeah. with each other? And like here, and here, <sighs> okay, and here, here we are. Okay, 2021. Joe Biden is president, <laughs> and ha- wh- what happened with Russia? I, the, the, what's different, really? I mean, what's different? What's different other than like you don't like again, like the liberals on Twitter? Like, what's different other than they don't care? They don't care. We're, we're gonna retake Crimea. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna get. We're gonna go back to Germany. They got. They got a lot of good notes on how to invade <laughs> Eastern Europe. <laughs> we're gonna work with NATO. Angela Merkel. We're gonna drive a patent tank. Into the Crimea, it's going to sink in the Black Sea. I was on the Foreign <laughs> Affairs Committee for 14 years. I worked with NATO. You'll never get a better Polish joke than you will with me. <laughs> we're gonna, we're, somehow we're, we're still going to forget to pack winter clothes <laughs> in the invasion of Russia. The, not a lot of people know this, but I went out there. I was out there. And my buttons on my coat were made of tin. And they fell apart in the harsh Russian winter. <laughs> <laughs> we had to walk a thousand miles back through the snow uphill just to get just a retreat dad i was I, I, when i was 12 i was in the grand army napoleon <laughs> <laughs> i fell down in the snow and i saw old ben calling out for me <laughs> <laughs> i had to cut up my tauntaun to stay warm <laughs> <laughs> they smell worse dead than alive. Oh, it kills me. <coughs> oh. I'm so tired, man. <laughs> it's like, just so demor. You know, sometimes it's like I'm poetry. Just- it rhymes. <laughs> <laughs> I just like you ever like- face down a wampa? Not easy. <laughs> Went to Dagobah, <laughs> looking for a Jedi master. Found a little green guy. You wouldn't, you wouldn't consider that a great, a great warrior would be a tiny little green guy. It really makes you think about the nature of power. He's 800 years old. <laughs> Almost as old as I am. <laughs> he, tried to st- he tried to steal my Slim Jims. <laughs> from the robot. <laughs> <laughs> we, I can't do another four years of this, man. Sure you can. You have no choice. This is the end. <laughs> <laughs> this is the end of the world yeah. and you get to live through it yeah sometimes i just want to time take a nap doesn't the exist afternoon. there's no such thing as decades anymore where this is just like the one long fucking just mm-hmm. this is just the collapse we're yeah. just we're just in the collapse time is a flat circle time, like, is, a, it, time is a flat circle man it's just a, 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 a so remarkably, is <laughs> a remarkably low remarkably <laughs> low return on investment <laughs> for your participation in the american economy <laughs> you really get nearly nothing for it. That, that's like the thing that fucking kills me. You I get saw literally this. nothing for it. in most in, in most cities. You can't even pay pay your rent. Just participating yes. in the in the American economy. Yes, I, I was looking like with just I, I, I was sickened by the um the Guardian put out the this article that came out I think today about the companies that haven't paid federal income tax. Mm-hmm. 
and it, I, like give literally, it to me, man, give it to me. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Uh, yeah. Uh, give me. Give me one second. Let me get. It. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. So. So here's just a rundown of companies that have paid. Uh. You know. Zero income tax, despite making all of nearly all all these companies I'm going to list anyway made over a billion dollars in in uh, incomes. Duke Energy, FedEx, Dish Network, American Electric Power, Kinder Morgan, friends of the show, Excel Energy, Nike, Salesforce.com, which nobody can tell me it, it explicitly what they do. DTE Energy, First Energy, Williams, PPL, CMS Energy, Archer Daniels Midland, which I would love to do a show on at some point, one of the largest agriculture companies, agribusiness companies in the United States, Evergy, Capit Oil and Gas. If you'll notice, a lot of these are oil and gas companies, and I'm just going to uh, uh, mention one more article, which is in Common Dreams, friends of the show, uh, called Fossil fuel companies got $8.2 billion in tax bailouts, then fired over 58,000 workers. Woo! It's just like, it's it's just constant. It doesn't, it just doesn't stop. Dwight, can you do me a quick favor? Yeah, of course. Can you, can you run down a few of the names on that list again with that same level of energy? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's, let's, I'm, I'm going to keep going here. Yeah. Evergy, Cabot Oil and Gas, Westlake Chemical, Advanced Micro Devices, Textron. And Penske Twins! Autom- <laughs> oh my god <laughs> is that lmfao <laughs> it's a bud light commercial okay i thought it, i thought it was like the no, lmfao no. with lil john bum, 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 bum. i love playing video games yeah it wasn't that hanging LMFAO? with my bros and twins no it was like some <laughs> terrible fucking beer commercial i do oh, I, 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 from I the 2000s yeah remember. yeah yeah let's make it sound good <laughs> you, you timed it well yeah man it's just it's uh it, it's bleak looking i'm like i'm literally looking at nike i pay i paid more in federal income tax than did nike i'm not gonna make any quantitative claims about how much federal income tax i may or may not be paying uh, when i say okay, <laughs> personally <laughs> this, this of course they're talking about you know effective tax year rate in the last three years uh i want to be clear i have not yet paid my taxes this year but of course i'll get around to it it's extended to may 17th sure oh is it extended great <laughs> i can put it off it's april i can <laughs> april 2nd i can Chris. put it off another month yeah oh yeah <laughs> this again like you know uh, if talking to a friend of the show about this about how like you know i think that there's a, a um deliberate adversarial uh a relationship that we're meant to have with the irs with taxes in general because like we want to have a bad taste in our mouths when we think about taxes instead of like you know hey we need to get something out of that but whatever uh, we didn't even talk about matt gates yeah <laughs> there's so much shit that happened this week it's i know yeah. it's so we'll get to it it's we'll get to it we'll, we'll get to i it. really we'll, want to talk about joel greenberg his buddy who probably snitched on him because that dude is had you guys heard of joel greenberg before this week no oh no. buddy oh no. buddy that it could be a whole episode literally i'm this sure guy, <laughs> this is this is um, matt gates's friend who got who either snitched on him or like somehow got him wrapped up in, in this investigation but like this dude got elected to the seminole county tax collector and then just like immediately started just plundering the public coffers for like to buy like guns and cryptocurrency and shit and shit and then um jesus yeah he's a he's a real interesting one man there's a whole lot of shit he like he used his like tax collector badge to impersonate a police officer and pull somebody over I'm like this Are guy you did shitting <laughs> me? no there's a whole lot of wild shit he just got new charges yesterday he's got like 33 um criminal counts now and like so yeah so Matt Gates is fucked because certainly the FBI is like, okay, Joel, t- or tell us more about your friend Matt, the sitting congressman. <laughs> you know, <laughs> tell us all yes. you know. Yeah, certainly. Well, this- he'll be like, yeah, of course. <laughs> that guy's a fucking weirdo. No, he's fucked. Yeah, Matt Gates is is really fucked. I, I'm sure by the time next week rolls around, it'll be some other fucking wrinkle that will never even. I, I'm I I, I, I I could see Don Jr. being wrapped up in this somehow. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, Dad, this congressman really takes a liking to me. Yeah, shut up, <laughs> shut up, Don. <laughs> well, what it really reminded me of, especially because like the like like I watched Matt Gates's Tucker Carlson interview like a couple times just to kind of like take it all in, especially because it seemed like he was contradicting himself within it, but like. 
Um, he, he he doesn't want to talk about the FBI investigation at all. He wants to talk about um, this extortion plot, supposedly, or this bribery plot or whatever, this extortion plot, and like, which may or may not be true, but that doesn't negate the criminal investigation and the sex trafficking. <laughs> he just he just doesn't yes. want to, he just doesn't want to talk about that. But then like the next day we got additional details about like suppose like the so called extortion or whatever. And it's like apparently it was two guys who approached his father, um, Don Gates, who's like a big name in Florida politics, and um they wanted to talk yes. to him about like the way they describe it is that they were not trying to extort him, but they were like soliciting a donation to the family of Robert Levinson, who is a CIA agent that was captured in Iran 13 years oh, ago. Oh no! And, oh, I remember that name. And it was—he's literally like de- declared dead. Um, but I guess yes. his, his family is still trying to um, get him back, or thinks he's alive, or whatever. And so, like, supposedly the guys who came to who approached Matt Gates, his father, were soliciting um, a donation to try to get him back from Iran somehow. Um, but like the um, like. The, the the quid pro quo was that like if if he did that then um they're like well we know that your son is you know, under investigation and um you know if you were to donate the sum of money it would look really good for him and um you know if we could get robert levinson back from iran you know joe biden would be <laughs> very benevolent and would pardon your son like this is supposedly the uh, the quid pro quo or whatever so it, but, but it, it reminded me like when i read it it reminded me of do you remember um the thing about like michael flynn and his son michael flynn jr when they were gonna like that that like kidnapping the, the, the kidnapping plot they had uh, um about that guy gulan the um oh yes <laughs> the the turkish opposition <laughs> yeah. leader yeah. who's that living was like in, in pennsylvania in pennsylvania yeah that they were gonna like try to kidnap him and have him like sent back to um to turkey yeah it's just like this it's incredibly oh my god bizarre convoluted oh, well, didn't, didn't like didn't like on the on he was like in the inauguration <laughs> when when trump became president and flynn like texted someone like it's done we're gonna do this <laughs> It's so stupid. Like I can't. Like the, the, the Matt Gates thing is so good because the information that we have already is so stupid, and it's only going to get stupider. Uh, I'm like <laughs> trying. Tends I'm, to do. I'm trying to make sense of this. The, the Robert Levinson angle about these guys approaching him to try to like get a 25 million dollar donation or whatever to that somehow oh, I, that somehow promise. that's gonna that's gonna get this guy who's already been declared dead back from Iran. I don't know. Um, I promise it'll be even f- more fucked up by the next week. And and we'll talk about it then. <laughs> All right, Good night, folks. <laughs> Good night, folks. <laughs> Till later. <laughs> Stay cool. I love playing two-hand touch, eating way too much, watching my team win with the twins. I love quarterback.